Well, South Africans continue to complain about the high cost of data. Last week, President Saul Ramaphosa announced initiatives to deal with this in his State of the Nation address. The president says regulators are working to ensure deep price cuts for prepaid bundles, discounts for low-income households and free access to educational and public interest websites. Well, this is to help bridge the digital divide as the fourth industrial revolution fast approaches. I'm joined by the Minister of Communications, Stella Ndabeni Abrams, who joins us from uh, our studios in Cape Town. Now, Minister, good morning to you. What is the update on the data cost reduction? Morning, Polly, and morning to the viewers at home. And of course, as we have already articulated, that President Ramaphosa gave progress on the work uh, in relation to reduction of cost to communicate. The two regulators, which is ICASA, the authority that's responsible for regulation of the industry, and the Competition Commission are working together in order to ensure that they find each other and try to come up with a common approach mm -hmm. in relation to how fast and what are the things in, according to law that the operators have to really abide by. Mm. The What's Commission, the timeline, Commission report, as we have had, it released. Well, I can put timelines now because the, the, the Competition Commission has extended the deadline to the end of February. But of course, definitely by April, May, we are hopeful as government that they would have started the implementation of what we spoke about. Minister, let's move to the South African Post Office. The CEO is on suspension, was placed on suspension since December. What's the reason? Well, as you have heard or read, the CEO is, the acting CEO is, uh, is on suspension. Uh, the board did inform the shareholder that they got some information that's implicating and of course that's an internal matter that I can't talk to now because they're busy dealing with that with their legal uh, representatives. The matter is between the post office board and, 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 and the complainant or the accused, in, the alleged accused in this instance. Once Minister, the details are there, as I know, can, that can the I post office board is in constant communication with the legal representatives. Mm. Yes, you can. Uh, Minister, the entity we are speaking about is a public entity which has received billions of rand in bailouts from government over the years. Surely the suspension of its acting CEO is in the public interest. What is it that Ms. Kwele is alleged to have done alongside the supply, the supply chain management person? I fully agree with you. The entity we're talking about is a public uh, entity, and therefore the public takes interest in it. But South Africa is a country with laws, and therefore those laws have to be adhered by all, including this minister speaking here. The matters that are subject to care cannot be disclosed in the public because everybody has a right to be respected, a right to be had, and I'm giving the post office together with the acting CEO that opportunity to resolve the matters, and then we come and brief the public. About those. The entity posted 1.17 billion rand in losses last year. Could that be part of the reason she's suspended? Well, as I said, the matter is subject to We will disclose the details when the legal teams have finalized it. Your name in court, because I understand that that matter has gone to court, is your name clean here? Will you not be implicated by her? as and when this matter is argued in court? Well, Oli, I won't be responding to rumors, unfortunately. You can then check with the sources so that they can verify. The information that I provided to you now is what is official communication between the minister and the board of the post office, and mm. I can't go beyond that. Well, let's talk about the board a little bit. Uh, you've chosen to replace almost that entire board uh, board full of experienced people, and it is alleged that they are meeting almost on a daily. What is on the agenda of this board? Only to start with, they did not replace any board. The term of office of the old post office board came to an end. Hmm. It lapsed, and therefore the minister had to appoint a new board. That's not replacement. Secondly, the board has met. 
uh, according to the challenges that are there, the post office that they needed to pay attention to, and they did brief the ministry and the department to say, Minister, we have a 90-day plan mm. that we need to implement in order to address the challenges that are faced by the post office. And amongst those challenges is the issue of attending to the AG findings, is the issue that everybody is worried about in terms of the distribution of social grants. Mm. And that's the work that's being done by the post office. What was the process followed, Minister, in appointing the chairperson of the board? I don't know, Koli, what's your understanding of, of appointment of public boards. But if you don't have, let me tell you, mm. all boards are appointed by the shareholder. You choose if you're going to call for, uh, you advertise or whatever, and there's no specific process that's within the law that says this is how you appoint a chairperson. Of course, amongst the nominated uh, individuals, if you have called for nominations or those that applied, you look at the particular skills that you're looking for. Mm. And in this instance, I would really not want to talk about an individual. It doesn't matter how we feel about the individual, mm. but that board is working as a collective. And the information that I'm sharing with you now is what the collective has given to me. Well, the, the talk minister, in fact, the reports go that uh, that board chairperson, his name, first of all, was not on the list, and they were appointed without consultation. Consultation with who? Consultation with those that, that would have been uh, involved in the appointment of the chairperson of the board. What due process was those, followed in the Who are those that are supposed to be involved? Only? Only, who are those that are supposed to be consulted? After I've given you the explanation on the process that ministers choose to follow when they appoint for as long as it's not regulated like SABC, mm. like ICASA and MDDA. What other processes followed? When you talk of consultation, who is the person that's supposed to be consulted? Mm. I did say the appointment of the post office board is the minister's responsibility. Mm. And the minister, of course, within the corporate governance chooses what options and method must be followed. Mm. So when you say a process was not followed, which process are you talking about? And who is the person that the minister was supposed to consult, according to your people that gave you the information? Mm. All right, Minister. Uh, hopefully your process will be above board then. Uh, let's uh, stick with the board, perhaps. And uh, that board, is it involved in any supply chain management issues, to your knowledge? Only, as I said, the board is responsible for its specific tasks, and therefore the operations and the decisions that they take are decisions that involve their own mandate. Mm. And the board has to oversee the work of, of, of the supply chain. Just like I get concerned when monies are not spent accordingly, doesn't mean that I'm going to come and dictate what must happen. Mm -hmm. But it becomes my responsibility as the shareholder to make sure that government monies are well spent and are well accounted for. Mm -hmm. That's my responsibility, although the PFMA gives that authority to the accounting authority, the director general. But as a person who oversees the portfolio, it is in my interest to make sure that public funds are well spent. And in this case, with the SAPO and its operations, we are fully behind them to say the work that they are doing, they must continue to make sure that they attend to the rot that is out there. They must continue to attend to the work that is of challenges that are faced by the public in relation to the services provided by the post office. And they must turn around the post office to make sure that unlike the previous years, mm -hmm. we do not com continue to experience the wastage that we have seen. It is my responsibility and it is the responsibility of the board to make sure that everything is adhered to. Mm -hmm. Just for your information, Goli. There's no tender that has been issued under the new board. All right. Minister, as a final question to you, at a personal level, allegations have been leveled against you that you flew your husband on taxpayers' money all the way to Switzerland in order to celebrate the anniversary of your wedding. Is that true? What do you think, Colin? Do you think I would take my husband to a wedding anniversary in Switzerland? I had said on this matter as I issued the statement that apparently you, the statement that you read, that I said, I've never been to Switzerland. My husband has never been to Switzerland. We went to Geneva and New York 
to, of course, to do the work that I'm expected to do. Mm -hmm. It is a blatant lie. And as the journalist, please make your own investigation and get the reporter that wrote about that to provide evidence. I do realize clearly that it's becoming a norm in this country that people tend to throw things and then they're not held accountable. I think journalists must really adhere to the ethics or the code, the press code, to make sure that when they give the public information, it is information that is authentic, unless they're involved in some campaign that unfortunately I don't know about. But one thing I can tell you, Koli, it doesn't matter how many times journalists write about me in terms of the lies that they, they, they write. I'm not going to stop doing my work. I'm going to do it diligently. I've been a deputy minister for seven years. I've seen how government works, and I'm not going to pull back. I'm going to push forward to deliver in the interest of the public of this country. Minister Stella Ndabeni Abrams, thank you very much for your time.